Welcome, welcome. It's great to see all you men out there today. My name is John Laskowski, and that is a picture of me. Uh, and I do have a few more that don't look uh, quite as age relevant as I am now, but great to have you here. First thing about a, a group is I like to know a little bit about the group. I was a basketball player. You're gonna hear about that a little today. Anybody in the audience who played high school basketball, freshman team, JV team, varsity team, please stand up. I wanna see all the basketball players. Look at them, look at them all. All right, good to have you guys here. Good to have you guys here. I mean, this is Indiana, playing high school basketball. That's, that's a great thing, isn't it? So I was on the freshman team at St. Joe High School, South Bend, Indiana, okay? And I averaged 20 points that year on the freshman team. Uh, well, that's not exactly true. I scored 20 points all year. <laughs> and we had 12 games. So I averaged one and a half points per game, okay? I wanted to be honest, it's an honest group here. I gotta be honest with you, okay? So I, my career is not going anywhere fast, okay? I, I did make the JV team and I averaged 10 points a game on the JV team. So I'm making some improvement, but to be a real hot shot, you have to be on the varsity when you're a sophomore, okay? That's where the real studs play, right? So my junior year, I'm on the team. I made the varsity, made the varsity as a junior, and I got a picture of my very first game. Let's pull that first one up. Oh my gosh, that's me, 35, six foot four, 165 pounds, and I'm the center on our team. Look at those other guys in there, okay? But I tell you, I am so excited to be on the varsity. It's, it, it's just a treat. I averaged 15 points a game that year. Not sure I did it. Show off the next one. And that's my senior year right there, all right? Six foot four, I'm up to 175 pounds now at St. Joe High. Before the year started, I had no idea how it would go, but um, it turned out pretty good. We had six seniors coming back that year and we lost the sectional championship by two points. And you played high school basketball, that's the goal. Just cut down that little piece of net and give that to me, I'm gonna love it. And coach set up some rules, no drinking beer, play basketball in the summer, and three of the guys got kicked off the team. You know, bad, bad news. So now we have two five foot 10 point guards and myself, that's it. And the coach sets up a new offense. He said, guys, here's what we're gonna have to do. Uh, you guys bring the ball down and you throw it to John. I said, coach, that's a great offense. I love that offense. And so from one and a half points a game as a freshman, I averaged 29 points a game as a senior in high school, okay? I was the sixth leading scorer in the state of Indiana, second team all state, and I was gonna get a chance to go to college. Got a couple more shots up there. Uh, that's a rebound. Now look at that hair. So in the summer, I bleached my hair blonde, thought that'd be pretty cool, so it was still growing out there. Next one. And that's, uh, again, pretty skinny, but um, I'm scoring points. Next one. How do you score 29 points a game, okay? You have the ball, your teammate's open, you do not throw him the ball, okay? <laughs> You concentrate on scoring, okay? So that, that's a great picture of how to score 29 points a game, okay? That, that's a picture. Um, it was a great uh, time for high school and uh, our team did not win the sectional that year, unfortunately, uh, and I was very disappointed, but it was time to go to college. And uh, I was a, a small time Indiana Midwest guy and Polish kid from the west side of South Bend and not a lot of good things happened to those guys, but uh, I was gonna get to college and there was a new coach at Indiana. His name was Bob Knight. It was his very first year. He was transferred from Army, took the Indiana job and he sent a scout to see me play in high school because he liked Catholic school kids to go to Army, they were better disciplined. And the scout went back and said, the kid's not very good. It was early December. I had a bad game. He said, he's not good enough to play at Army. All these years go by, and I find out that that coach, that scout who came to see me, was a man named Bill Parcells, 
the, the, the Super Bowl champion football coach, who was also at Army on the football staff, must have been visiting Notre Dame, Era Parsegian, in the 70s. And coach said, hey, why don't you go across the street, go see this kid play, pay two bucks and tell me he's any good. And Parcells, he's no good. Don't take him to Army. And over the years, of course, Parcell would come back to visit and Knight would say, I'm never sending you again to see anybody. This kid turned out to be pretty good. So I think he had a picture of me in college there. Um, that's, uh, that's playing Kentucky. Uh, and boy, that's our rival. We love to beat Kentucky. Another shot there. That's Purdue. That's another rival we have. Now, a lot of people think that when you score 29 points a game in high school, you need to just score points. No, I'm playing defense right there. See me steal the ball right there? All right. Um, uh, one of the highlights of my college career was against Purdue in 1974. And it was the last game of the year at Assembly Hall. We had to beat Purdue to be the Big Ten champs. And it's a close game. We're up one, 20 seconds to go. I throw the ball into Quinn Buckner, great All-American guard for Indiana. He drills the ball down the floor. Parkinson steals the ball, dribbles the other way, scores, we're down one, 20 seconds to go. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So Buckner throws the ball into me and I'm not gonna throw it to him again, we can't, what happened. So the clock's winding down. I take a shot with eight seconds to go to win the game. It doesn't go in. But I scramble for the rebound and I get fouled, okay? Here is that free throw right there. Eight seconds to go, last game of the year. If we win, we're Big Ten champs. If we lose, second place. And that's me right there on the line. I'm an 80% free throw shooter. I'm thinking about the 20% I miss, of course, you know? <laughs> the rest of the team's excited, but I'm a little concerned. So that shot goes in. Purdue calls timeout, always ice the guy, right? I made the second one. We block a shot at the buzzer. Indiana wins the Big Ten Championship, all right? It was a great day, great day. Next shot up there. So let's, let's go back to the previous shot. Go back to the, the previous one if you can. It's hard to see, but there's a guy on the bench. There's the Indiana bench right next to the Purdue player's leg. He's got a towel on his head. See him right there? He's, got, he's not even looking at my free throw, okay? He, he can't stand it. He can't stand it. Next shot, okay? That's him right there, 45, okay? Now all the cheerleaders are there. I got the game ball. He's my best buddy now. Now he's there with me all the way. I have shown that picture to him. I said, thanks for your support, buddy. I really appreciate it, okay? <laughs> Jim Cruz, one of my great teammates there. Uh, next shot there. This is February 3rd, 1975, a long time ago. Who's heard of Sports Illustrated Magazine? That is me on the cover. Unbelievable, unbelievable. It's a strange story how it happened, but uh, it, uh, it did come true. Next shot. I got drafted at the NBA. I played two years for the Chicago Bulls before Michael Jordan, before Michael Jordan. We weren't very good, but I did get to play two years for the Bulls. And next shot after that, I was in the TV business, okay? Color commentator for Indiana basketball for 33 years. Coach Knight said, hey, uh, of your team, your senior year, seven guys made it to the pros. You're the first guy to get cut. <laughs> Congratulations. He said, I want to get somebody who played for me, who understands my offense and defense, educate the people of Indiana on how Indiana's going to play basketball. He said, that's you. I said, coach, I understand the offense and the defense, but I cannot talk on TV. I am very shy. You know that. I said, what do you have to do to be in TV? He said, well, when the red light comes on, start talking. Hey, I'm in TV. 33 years later, it worked out pretty good. I have no complaints there. So um, sounds like a pretty good life, doesn't it? From a kid from the west side of South Bend to get to go to Indiana, play in the NBA, get a college degree, uh, life is pretty good. But the flip side of that is, that was 50 years ago. Great memories, but what's it got to do with much today? I still like to talk about it, and people of a certain age still remember me, but there's a lot of guys here who, this is the first time you've ever heard of me, and time goes by. You have a different favorite Indiana player, and it could be Trace Jackson Davis, right here from the Greenwood area, and what a great guy he is. So it kind of shows you that as time goes by, things change. Things change a lot. I had a good life. 
uh, lots of good jobs, but never a follower of Jesus Christ until 1992. Almost 40 years old, thinking all along I'd done all this by myself. I just practiced hard, I had great coaches. Isn't it wonderful how life turns out? And then once you become that believer, you start to think about things in a different way. Like maybe this wasn't everything that I thought it would be. And so uh, you're gonna hear from my pastor next, Dave Wigington. I was at a sermon on October 28th, 2012 at his church. And he talked about the Our Father, the prayer, the Our Father. And in fact, here's the notes right here from that sermon. I've got it laminated. I read this every day. And he explained the second line of the Our Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what that meant was God has a plan for your life. And if you ask him to show you that plan, he will show you what he really wants you to be. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I'm a basketball player, former basketball player. I got a great life. I mean, what could be better than than what I just showed you? And I believed in Pastor Dave, and I kept saying that prayer day after day after day. I did it for a year and a half. Nothing. I stayed with it. I was uh, driving from Chicago back to Bloomington, and I stopped at a Culver's restaurant in Crown Point, Indiana. I love Culver's. Who's been to Culver's? Raise your hand if you've been to Culver's, okay? If the guy next to you didn't raise his hand, take him to Culver's today, okay? He'll understand why you did, okay? And the thing about Culver's, they love to have the owner in the restaurant, okay? I whip into the Crown Point restaurant, the owner's there. He recognizes me, he's a sports fan. He knew I was a basketball player. We start talking. I love Culver's. Since 1995, I've been going to Culver's. I love the food. I talked to him for 20 minutes. I'm heading to Bloomington. I said, I gotta go. He says, hey, have you ever thought about getting in the restaurant business? I said, absolutely not. Guys lose their butt in the restaurant business. I would never do that, never. And I drive home, it's three hours. You're in the car by yourself. You don't have to fool anybody, you know. You guys have all been there. And this little peck on your head. Now, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. You like Culver's? Oh, I love Culver's. I love everything about Culver's. How much restaurant experience do you have? None. How much business experience do you have? None. Uh, Wait a minute now. If this is God, is the Bible full of stories about guys who had no talent and God somehow got them where he wanted them to go? Yes, I've read those stories. And by the time I got home, I thought, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the year and a half, April of 2014. Maybe this is the one. I called the guy back, Fred, what do you have to do to be in the restaurant business? He said, well, Culver's is really good. He said, they have an operations manual. You follow the things that are in the manual. A lot of guys before you have done it and you can be successful. I said, I played for a college coach who outlined what I need to do and it worked out great for me. I can do that, I can do that. And so I looked into a Culver's franchise with no restaurant experience and no business experience, but I had God behind me. Interviewed, they love to have the, the owner in the restaurant. And I am, uh, was able to get the restaurant in Bloomington, Indiana. The Culver's opened four and a half years ago. Little did I know that six other franchisees for Culver's tried to go to Bloomington to open. They realized the zoning requirements were too hard. They walked away and went somewhere else. It took me four years to get open. November of 18, we opened, and God gave me the ability to wait out that four years as the seventh guy to try to open. We got it open. And uh, I love the restaurant business. What can I say? I get to go in the dining room. I'm never in the kitchen. I'm in the dining room. I talk to our guests, and I talk to our team, and we're there as as a ministry tool to help our community, okay? We're open two months in Bloomington. There's a fire family of five, three kids, husband and wife, they lose one of the kids in the fire. I go to the memorial service and I find the parents and I said, hey, I own a Culver's restaurant in Bloomington. I'd like to see if we can raise some money for you because of this tragedy. They agreed, we had a special day to raise money, we advertised for it. We were able to write them a check for $10,000 to get their life back together. Uh, Just yesterday, my wife was in Bloomington. Um, We had a team member who was a high school student. She got pregnant and had to quit her job at the Culver's. 
tough family situation. He, she and I took her to the Hannah House Maternity Center in Bloomington, where she was able to live and have her baby and start her life. She was on the telethon yesterday, and she was able to talk about her experience. She's now married, has two kids, one on the way, and we were able to get that girl there and get her life going. And so one of the things that Culver's tries to do is reach out in the community. We have fundraisers for different charities and groups that come about. My wife's from Seymour. Uh, we decided to open our second restaurant in Seymour. It opened a year ago, April 18th. So it's our, our week, uh, this week's our anniversary of one year. We're doing the same thing in Seymour. We've got several kids that work with us from a Christian school. I spoke at their school last month and was able to tell them this story about find out what God's plan for your life is early. Don't wait till you're 60 years old like I was, okay? Uh, my daughter works for our Culver's. My son owns the one in Jasper. We have three Culver's now in the family, okay? And he's loving it down there, and we're working to make sure that we're part of our community. If you have a Culver's in your community, you will know that they are part of your community well. You can get your charity to go to them and say, hey, I'd like to raise some money for my group, and they'll be more than happy to help you with that. So my encouragement to you men is simply this. I mean, it's too late for you guys to be great high school basketball players. Not gonna happen, okay? It's not too late for you to find out what God wants you to be, whether your life is not good at all or whether you think it's as good as it could be, which is where I was. I got the best life there is. It can't get any better, okay? I'm gonna go to Seymour, Indiana after this and I'm gonna work our lunch at the Culver's there and guests are gonna come in and a few are gonna say, I remember you when you played ball. Or they're gonna say, you got a picture, I got that Sports Illustrated on the wall in Seymour. Who's this guy? Oh, that's me, that's me, that was me a long time ago. Uh, and then I watch my team and ask them what they wanna do. How can I help you get to a better place in your life? So it's not just a hamburger joint that serves great food. It's a place where our ministry can be developed we can help our community, and that's much better than the life I had before, which was just talk on TV about basketball and enjoy your life. You're helping people. You'll find out shortly that helping people is one of the best things that you can do, and God's given us each some ability, some talent that we can do that with. So I encourage you to find out, ask him what it is. I didn't know mine was in the restaurant business. Had no idea. But he will make the doors open unbelievably to you and give you the life that you've always wanted. Thanks so much, man. Great to be with you today.